Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the Moonlight and Outdoors podcast. If you hadn't already, please go on over and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as our Instagram and Facebook. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in today. Guys, we want to try to make something special for everyone here. I know for myself, I would call myself a very, very uh, beginner when it comes to metal detecting. I use the word very twice because I'm not more intelligent to substitute in a fancier word for very. But uh, I'm very new, and I just recently, within the last month or so, have picked up the mentor that I needed to be successful in what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to bring him onto the show. I'm going to share him with you here, but don't try to mess it. He's my mentor, not yours. Don't forget that. <laughs> His name is Mr. Brant Jones, and welcome to the show, Brant. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good. How, how are you guys doing? living the dream over here i got uh i got brett morris here with me Hi, how you doing? Brett? and uh, brett's even more of a beginner than me he really practically has never done it but he showed a he expressed interest in it a few times so be a good one for him to set in on and and as he said basically he's in the position that i'm basing this show on today this is like for somebody that's just brand new thinking about getting into metal detecting doesn't know the angle to go i have several buddies that are in that boat so if nobody else listens to this show um it'll do some good for people like him and even myself so um i did put a, a list of interview questions together that i'm going to try to stay on a script so we can stay on topic and and not make this too lengthy and drawn out but first off brent if you would just simply introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about you well, my name is uh, Brant Jones. I'm from East Central Indiana. Um, I've been detecting since 2000. Um, I'm, I'm pretty successful. Uh, the reason I think I am is because of research. Um, research is a, is a big key to metal detecting. Um, it, it's how you find your old sites. It's how you learn. Uh, if, I, I love to learn. I love to learn our history, and that's that's basically the reason I do it. That's awesome. So when you said you've been metal detecting since 2000, blop, you cut out. So what year was that? It was 2008. 2008. So yeah. a couple I, of years. <laughs> I didn't realize. I mean, still compared to when you came here to the studio and we were talking that day the items that you brought with you the, of the, of the things that you found didn't reflect something that I would have assumed had been metal detecting just since 2008. That looked like stuff that you've been doing for a lifetime. So you must be really successful at what you're doing. Uh, I am. Uh, but like I said, what I like, I mean, you, you have to do the research. Uh, if you do the research, you're going to be successful. I started off with a $20 garage sale metal detector. That's what I started off with. And uh, I, I mean, I found good stuff. I found an Abraham Lincoln election uh, token. I found uh, large cents, Indian head pennies. I mean, just everything. And that was with a $20 garage sale detector. So any, anybody can do it. That's awesome. So I understand, Brant, that you have actually been featured in some magazines and different things in the in the industry of metal detecting. Is that correct? Yeah, um, I've been on the cover of Dirt Digest magazine. Uh, I've been in American Digger, which they're a huge uh, magazine several times. Actually, the guy that owns American Digger, uh, he came down and detected with uh a couple of us here uh, and i've been on east uh eastern and western treasures uh i've been in a lot of a lot of stuff like that okay so what's that is it oak island is that <laughs> <laughs> is that where you're headed uh, next uh hopefully hopefully i am <laughs> so i just wanted to pull that out of brant because he wasn't going to say it on his own but Brant's kind of a big deal in the in in the business, especially locally here. I mean, I would assume that if I went poking around in, in East Central Indiana and I brought up metal detecting in Brant's name, that there would be somebody that would make the connection and say, "Yeah, that, I know Brant." Yeah, Brant there's a lot Brant. of people that. Know me. <laughs> Good. So, um, 
<clears throat> one thing that we didn't cover in the introduction that I'd like to just throw out there is Brant has explained to me that there's actually area clubs that are a resource to him. Um, just tell us about that real quick, Brant. Uh, there, there are several clubs. I belong to East Central Indiana Treasure Hunters, which is uh, it's based out of Hartford City. And uh, actually, I'm a, a past president. I was a uh, president for one year and then vice president for three or four years. And we try to change up the president, uh, the presidency of that club. But that's a, a uh, it's a huge help for everybody, especially when you when you're just starting. Uh, everybody comes in there and everybody's decent. Everybody. There's nobody that's better than anybody else in there. So that's the reason I like it. That's awesome. So we're just going to go ahead and give you the credit you deserve. <laughs> just hang tight here. Uh. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, what do you think? I, I did pretty good getting this guy on the show. Didn't yeah, I? that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. When you got to be on the cover of these magazines and, and everything, how did you, um, how did that come about? Um basically you you submit stuff and if they want you then they they will contact you so it, it's pretty easy so, uh actually the cover of uh, dirt digest magazine um the guy that started that magazine is a very good friend of mine and um uh, actually i work with him at my paid paid job and he asked me if i wanted to be on the very first the very first cover so yeah, that's what I did. So. That's really cool. I need a I need an autographed copy of that. <laughs> <laughs> right, we can do that. Yeah, honestly, that'd be awesome. So, um, Brant, moving on. Um, I, I just wanted to make sure that people knew that I brought on a a, a, a credible interviewee onto the show here. Um, you talked about starting with that twenty dollar detector, but let's skip from the $20 all the way up until now, because I'm sure you went through a slew of different machines. Yes. Tell us what you're using today currently. Uh, right now, I, I've, got, I've got a lot of detectors, and I use a, I use a lot of them, but uh, the, my main detector right now is a MindLab Equinox 800. Uh, very, very good machine. It runs uh, multiple multiple frequencies at the same time, like most detectors only run one frequency. Um, that's what shoots down in the ground and then returns to your detector. But the Equinox runs uh, five frequencies at the same time. So that's, that's very, very useful. So, and just so everyone knows, I have uh, basically one step down from the unit that he has. Um, how much is that unit, first off? I know someone's going to think right off the bat. And um, you can close your door if you don't want your wife to hear. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, it's it's about nine hundred and fifty dollars uh, for the machine that I'm using. But I was very fortunate, and I went to a, what's called a seated hunt, and I won my metal detector, so I did not have to pay for it. So I'm I'm a lucky guy. <laughs> it, it, the way the story that I got mine, which the I got the Mind Lab Equinox six hundred. And I got mine by collecting Christmas gift cards and Father's Day gift cards and just miscellaneous stuff until I only had to pay about two or three hundred bucks out of pocket. So not as lucky as Mr. Jones here, but I got a hell still, of a nice Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a so good. you have your Mind Lab Equinox eight hundred and just trying to cover the equipment necessary. I know you have a pinpointer. Um, tell us about that real quick. Uh, what a pinpointer is, is it's a real small, uh, it's, it's to, when you dig your hole, it's to put in your hole to pinpoint, um, the object that you're trying to find. Uh, normally those go an inch deep, an inch and a half deep if you're lucky. Um, but you don't want it to go real deep. You want, because what you're trying to do is you're trying not to scratch uh, whatever you're, you're, uh, getting out of the ground, you're trying not to scratch it. Okay. And so, um, the purpose of, of the pinpointer is just to, once you dig your hole, it, it helps you aid and not scratching it by hacking it with your shovel 
Um, but also once you got this clot of dirt up, I know this happens to me a lot. I get frustrated and I'm like, man, I know it's here. My detector's hitting it. I just can't find it. Um, yeah. So, and what, what particular pinpointer do you use? Not recommend. I, I, what I use is, is a carrot or a Garrett carrot. Uh, it's a, it's called a Garrett pro pointer and it's an orange, uh, an orange pinpointer. I'd have uh, never guessed that'd been orange. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've used several. Uh, I've got a I've got a uh, it's a Garrett. It's just a black, the black one. Um, I I like the orange one because it's waterproof and you know they're they're good. They're quality. I will add that I have the Technetics version pinpointer and it's forest green, and I don't recommend anyone buy a forest green pinpointer um, for obvious reasons. So. Stick with the Garrett carrot. <laughs> um, yeah, I've okay. been, a lot of people have been with me before and, and actually lost their uh, their pen pointers. Uh, I've had to go out in many fields before and, and get them for people. So yeah. Um, so your current machine, the Equinox eight hundred. How does that compare to your? Let's say your second place machine. Um. I, like I said, I've used a lot of detectors, and there's a lot. There's still a lot of good detectors uh, that just use single frequency, but um, the Equinox blows them out of the water. I mean, okay. uh, if, if if you're serious about detecting, um, I would suggest you getting one and at least trying it out. Okay, so we've established that you recommend if you're going to start. Is it good to start with the the a twenty dollar unit from a garage sale, or are you going to end up getting frustrated and hanging it up, or or should you spend the money right up front? What do you recommend? Um, I would I would suggest about a a mid range, you know, uh, a two hundred dollar one because a lot of people uh, they do not put in the research and they do get uh, frustrated easily. And they just put their detector in the in the closet. And if you buy, you know, a two hundred dollar one, you can get close to that uh, back out of it if metal detecting is not for you. So, Brant, from your experience on metal detectors, does is the value pretty represent representative of the quality? So, you know, if you take a a nine hundred dollar unit versus a one hundred dollar unit, you're getting ten percent of the value. You you're confident in saying that? Oh yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So it doesn't really matter. Um, every unit's going to be good, but you know, just kind of know that. Okay, that's that's a good fact. Um, that's good. So, um, about, you know, uh, you're you're going for features on your metal detector. If you get a hundred dollar uh, metal detector. That's probably going to be like a beep and dig. There's not going to be any information. It's just going to tell you, hey, there's something here. Let's dig it up. Compared to a $900 detector, that'll, you, I mean, it takes a little bit to get used to, but it'll tell you if you've got a quarter or a nail or, you know, whatever, a full tab or whatever. So what you're referring to there is the, is the VDI number that pops up, correct? Right, right. And so explain to us a little bit about VDI. Uh, VDI is basically the metal detector takes a guess at what it thinks it is in the ground. And the higher the VDI number, uh, the normally the better the, the target. Um, but like gold, gold doesn't hit real super high like you would think it, it would. It hits like a, uh, a pull tab. It, it hits uh, lower, so that, that's so, what it is. It's it's, a, it's basically an educated guess, right? And so, just kind of backing up even more, Brand actually came over here to the studio one time, and we were going to record this show, but we got too, or I, I'll say, I got too excited out in in my own backyard, you know scanning around, actually learning how to use my machine. We never even got um, to come in here and sit down before uh, he had to leave. So um, so I'm glad that he took that time with me because that was a, 
I, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for that couple hours in my backyard with with him then and he brought over his uh friend steve vaughn with him um which is actually the the connection between brant and i i met him through steve so yeah. steve if you're listening to this appreciate you for that connection i've learned a lot from both of you um so i appreciate that um i think it's going to be useful for folks to know and understand what the vdi is and so what's what's vdi stand for actually do you know uh, you know what? I'm not really sure. Uh, it stands for numbers on your, on your metal detector. <laughs> VDI meaning. Okay. I'm going to look it up. Visual discrimination indicator. I didn't mean to put you on the spot with that. Uh, I don't that's remember all right. that either. It's all good. So, um, so do you have any tips or recommendations on where someone can go and purchase a metal detector and, and all of the items that they need where they can try to maybe save money? Um, there, there's places on Facebook, uh, that you can buy used, but if you buy used, um, make sure you check out who you're buying it off of. Um, a lot of people use a company called Kelly Co Kelly Co metal detectors. Um, and then there's there's always your local, um, you know, there, there's shops all all around East Central Indiana, but um, I usually use a, a a shop called Digger's Den, and uh, they they've always cut me good deals. So, so. that's awesome. Yeah. Digger's Den and Kelly Co. Yep. Okay. Very well. Um, so earlier in the show, we were talking about learning um, resources that were available, like you're a part of that club. Um, yeah. I know that social media has a lot of metal detecting, Facebook groups and different things. So what what all do you recommend? Uh, if you're in East Central Indiana, I would go to uh, East, East Central Indiana Treasure Hunters. Um and I'm also, uh, we do YouTube videos for the uh, Indiana Dirt Detectives. So those are both on, those are both on Facebook. And uh, I mean, you can ask questions and get decent answers from good people. Awesome. So you're on YouTube. Yeah. Indiana Dirt Detectives. That's awesome. Yep. Okay. So, um, I know this is going to be, I, I kind of wanted to build everything up to, you know, once we get our machine, this is basically guys, the purpose of this show is to get you your equipment and get it set up and not even take a step out the door yet. This is just to get it set up to where you're ready to go. And then Brant said that he'd be willing to come back on for at least a part two. Hopefully we can just kind of do something with him, maybe not even monthly, but bi-monthly or quarterly or something getting back on and we can just talk a little bit more about it because i think that there's quite a few people i've been sharing i've been finding just wheat pennies and stuff and putting them on facebook and getting a lot uh, you know a bunch of likes i think this is something that people are interested in so i'd like to give them i'd like to give them what they want um uh, so a lot of a lot of things that you can find not just uh coins but i mean uh what i like is uh political tokens and I've been very, very fortunate, and I have found Abraham. I've got actually got four Abraham Lincoln election tokens. I've got uh, a Zachary Taylor token, uh, uh, Taft and Sherman. Uh, I mean, just a just a lot. Kennedy. I've got a couple Kennedy tokens, but uh, and some of that stuff is like really valuable. So I can. I'm just. I'm watching. Uh... I'm watching Brett here on the screen. He's sitting back here taking it all in. I know he's thinking, okay, Kelly Co. is going to be spending some money. <laughs> yeah. um, I just I just made us little on this. It, for those of you that are watching visually, I just had to make us look small because uh, we don't want to steal Brett, Brant's thunder here. Uh, um, you're not stealing anything from me. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us here, how do we set up? How do we set up our machine? Um. Well, I mean that's that's kind of machine specific, but uh, the re what I do is is I want I want it to be very sensitive, 
uh, you know, the small stuff, I want to be able to pick it out. Um, and I want my machine to go deep. So um, a lot of machines, uh, the uh, entry level, it's just a turn on and go. You just hit the power button and it's got everything set for you. You might have to do a little bit of tweaking. Um, and and that, that's fine. But uh, the higher end, you have to do a, a noise cancel and a ground balance. Um, because of the minerals in the, in the ground, it sets the machine for the minerals. And it allows you to go deeper. Gotcha. And so... You you start out with a ground balance. What's the ground balance do? That's the minerals. Um. Yeah. The the ground balance balance uh just makes makes the detector uh just balance for your own soil. Okay. Yeah. You know, if, if you uh, have one that doesn't do it, it might be great here, and then you take it down south, and it might not be set right. So you have to adjust it other ways. And and so what's the noise cancel then? The noise cancel just uh, like you have, say you have a uh, a cell phone in your pocket that can that can uh, set your machine off, and the noise cancel will uh, eliminate all of that. Or if there's power lines or something like that. Awesome. So, Brent, but I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this over to, to Brett here in a few minutes because um, we decided to do a pre-recorded show um, just just in case we had any bloopers or whatever. But Brett is you know he's like I said he's kind of the target audience right now, so I'm gonna turn it over to him and he's gonna ask you a couple of questions and things. But um, is there anything that I didn't ask today that you think would be important for? For the beginner to to know um but we was talking about the clubs um i i think it's it's it would be very useful for someone that doesn't know what they're doing to get with somebody that has some experience and uh, a, a good way to get with somebody like that is through one of the clubs but uh if if you go out with somebody you can learn um they might do something a little bit different than what you do and I think that's extremely useful. So. Yeah, when when Brant Head came over here, he was showing me how to do um, how to do research and and different things, and so all of that stuff is 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 huge. But so Brett, I don't not trying to throw you on under the bus or put you on spot here, but I know you have to have something brewing in the back of your mind. I have a few things brewing in the back of my mind. <laughs> uh, you know you. I did. I, I've never really known much about metal detecting. You know, when I think of that, I think of me at the beach in Florida and I see people, you know, looking for what I'm assuming rings and, you know, money and whatnot. Um, here in central Indiana, where, what's a, um, what's a good place to go look? Um, I am a, I'm a field hunter. I, I love to go in the fields, uh, where old houses used to be. And I have maps. Um, I'm, I'm from Randolph County. So there's Randolph County maps that date all the way back to 1865. And it tells where all the old houses were. Well, uh, it's, it's the same back then as it is now. People lose stuff. And the closer you are to the house, that's, that's where you want to be looking at. So um, it, the maps that I use tell you tells you where the houses, the schools, the churches, uh, stuff like that were. And that's, that's how you get on the good stuff. So putting in your research and yeah. where do you find those maps out? Like a County courthouse or something? You can, you can do that. Um, most counties will have their historical society and, uh, they, they will have maps. Also, there's a site online that's called historicmapworks.com. And, uh, there's actually a way that you can over, you can put the current satellite map down and then put the old map on top of it. And you can tell exactly where the house was. That's pretty cool. Which is what we were sitting at my picnic table in the backyard doing that. And that's dude, it's kind of cheating, Brent. <laughs> 
It's kind of cheating. I'm not <laughs> that, gonna lie. that took me several years to figure that out. So yeah, it took me ten minutes. Just saying. <laughs> uh, I maybe had some help, but you know. All right. Hey, I'm yeah. I'm all about helping people. Yeah, I wasn't going to share that secret on here. I'm like, man, I I skipped all over the maps. I'm thinking if I don't tell them about the maps. <laughs> yeah, but I, those maps those those maps have thousands and thousands of uh, home sites back in you know, back in the day. So there's no way that you can, that you can get them all. Well, I'm a greedy man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, that's great that you shared that. I actually meant to ask you before the show, I'm like, man, are we going to share all the secrets here? Or? <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't bother me a bit because, um, I mean, I like seeing the stuff that people find. I like seeing the stuff that you find and, you know, I, and if it's not found, uh, it's not ever going to get found. So right. we need to get it out of the ground and get it, uh, get it in some collection. Yeah. I've been, I send Brant my, just about everything I find. I text, I've texted him at two or three in the morning before. <laughs> so just cause I got excited. <clears throat> That's right. I like to see that stuff. I love it. So guys, if you want to, um, follow Brant, um, and his metal detector. I don't know how, how active are you on uh, Indiana Dirt Detectives on YouTube? Uh, we haven't put out a, a video for a little while, uh, but it's it's all in East Central Indiana. So uh, the stuff that we video it has been found right here. So um, basically, I do a lot of Facebook, and if you if anybody has questions, just you know, just hit me up and. And uh, I'll, I'll help out as many people as I can. That's great. So um, the name of the groups that you're active, that, that you're most active on in Facebook, what, what would that be? That would probably be uh, East Central Indiana Treasure Hunters. East Central Indiana Treasure Hunters. Guys, go check them out. Um, are you the admin of the group? or? Uh, no, but I post a lot on there. And like I said, I'm a past president. Um, uh, we actually meet once a month in Harford city and, uh, have a meeting and, um, uh, actually the, well, this is the first. So, uh, this month I'm going to be putting on a civil war, uh, display of stuff I found right here in Indiana that were, that's civil war related. And it's, it's here. The civil war stuff is here. Uh, there's guys that's been here from Tennessee and everywhere down South and they come to Indiana to hunt for civil war stuff. So it's, that's interesting. Yes. I know that I found some old buttons um, that you I sent to Brant via text message and he told me they were post civil war um, right. buttons. They have the Indiana state seal on them, um, but extremely neat buttons. Uh, I probably the coolest thing I found. Would that be cooler than the old Chinese coin? I, I think they are. Okay. I mean, I, but I'm a, I'm a button guy too. So Yeah. And uh, like I said, the Civil War stuff, I found Confederate stuff here, too. Because, uh, you know, d during the Civil War, uh, the guys from here, uh, they brought back stuff. Yeah. So. That's very interesting. It is. So guys, I, uh, Brett, you got anything else? Yeah, you... I have one more question. What's yeah. the, the coolest thing in your mind that you've ever found? Um. I was I was detecting along the Mississippi River here in Randolph County, and I got a uh, it looks like an eagle, and it had its head cut off, and it was like what is what is this? Well, come to find out, it's a War of 1812 hat pin, and it's the oldest known hat pin in the United States history, uh, and it was found right here. It's been in magazines, it's been in books, uh, it's it's uh, in a a, a hat pen identification book. It's the oldest known hat pen in the United States, and they didn't make hardly any of them. And I've got the only one known to exist. That's really cool, man. You think yeah. I could have that? <laughs> <laughs> you got about ten grand. I'll, I can let. You have it. <laughs> that was my next question. What's it worth? Yeah. Um. Actually, nobody knows. I've tried to find that out too, but nobody knows because it's the only one known to exist. Yeah. Priceless. So, yeah, it's priceless. Absolutely. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, 
Go ahead. I, he brought he brought over like a little tackle box full of. I'm not going to talk about my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> he already. Knows. I can only imagine. I'll, what I'll, that is. I'll tell him about it when we hang up here. But uh, he he already knows what I'm talking. <laughs> Brant knows what I'm talking about. But um, <laughs> yeah. So everyone, thanks again for for watching our show and and you know comment and tell Brant thanks for for sharing his time with us because it's awesome and we all have so much to learn and yeah. I'm very very grateful for the connection with with Brant because I know he's just been phenomenal since I've had him in my corner in in the metal detecting industry and uh, yeah. hopefully someday I'll be able to be someone else's mentor and pay it forward. There you go. And, uh, you know, like I said, if, if somebody has questions or uh, if I can help somebody out, just let me know and, and uh, I'll, I'll gladly help. Thanks so much, Brent. Absolutely. So, guys, thanks for watching the Moonlight and Outdoors podcast with Mr. Brent Jones on metal detecting. Be sure to like, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. We're on Instagram, Twitter. Anchor. Anchor. Any place you can listen to a podcast, listen to it. We have our video podcasts as of now only are shared on YouTube. Um, that might change in the future. Don't know. But for now, check us out on YouTube for the video podcast. Otherwise, anywhere else you can listen to a podcast, we'll be there. Thanks, Brent. We're out, buddy. See you.